Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a functional equation from the book Putnam and Beyond. I already told you about the book in another video. I'll also share some links down below. Let's get started. So we have the equation f of x minus 3 over x plus 1 plus f of x plus 3 over 1 minus x is equal to x and we're supposed to find f of x. Obviously we have certain conditions here for example x cannot equal negative 1 and x cannot equal positive 1 either. Now I'm going to use substitution, needless to say, right? That's my, one of my favorite methods. So for that purpose, I'm going to replace this expression here with y. Let's go ahead and do it. So after I do this, obviously the first parenthesis is going to be y, and then I'm going to find x in terms of y, and then I'll replace the x in the second part with that expression so that I can ba basically write the whole thing in terms of y. So let's do it. I have x minus 3 over x plus 1 equals y. From here, if you cross multiply, you get x minus 3 equals yx plus y. Let's go ahead and uh, collect the x terms on the same side. x minus yx is equal to y plus 3. From here, we can take out an x, 1 minus y. And finally, divide by 1 minus y, and you get x in terms of y. So x equals y plus 3 over 1 minus y. So this allows me to replace x with something, but the first one is already done. So we get f of y from there, and this x will be replaced with what it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that, and let's see what happens. This gives me f of y plus, now in this expression, I'm supposed to replace x with y plus 3 over 1 minus y. Let's go ahead and do that. y plus 3 over 1 minus y plus 3 divided by 1 minus x, which is y plus 3 over 1 minus y. Now, to be able to simplify this expression, actually, that's, that's supposed to equal f of y, right? f of y, f of uh, y plus, actually, no, never mind. It is f of y plus f of this, this gigantic expression here, equals x. So we're going to replace x with y plus 3 over 1 minus y. Here we go. So we need to simplify this expression obviously the stuff inside the parentheses if you multiply the top and the bottom of this by 1 minus y which is uh, the common denominator then you're going to be getting the following you're going to get y plus 3 from here when you multiply this by 1 minus y 3 times 1 minus y is going to be 3 minus 3y and if you do the same thing at the bottom obviously 1 minus y is going to cancel out and we're going to get 1 minus y minus y minus 3. Okay, so that's going to be my expression, and that's going to equal the same thing, y plus 3 over 1 minus y. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify what's inside the parentheses here, and then we're going to uh, use that expression later on. So y minus negative 3, y minus 3y is going to give us negative 2y plus 6, and this expression is going to be negative 2y minus 2. Obviously, this can be simplified if you go ahead and divide both the numerator and the denominator by negative 2. This is going to give you a nicer expression, and it's going to look like y minus 3 divided by y minus 1. And here's the right-hand side. Okay? So that's going to be my first expression that I'll be using. Let's go ahead and save this for later and see what else we can do with this equation. Now, I was able to turn the first one into y and replace it here and everywhere. But now we're going to use the same approach, but this time with this expression here. So let's go ahead and replace that part with z, okay? So let's see what happens if we do the following. So I'm going to replace that expression with z and I'll do it everywhere. So now the next step is then x plus 3 over 1 minus x is going to equal z. Now let's go ahead and cross multiply from here. That's going to give me x plus 3 equals z minus xz. And of course, I would like to get the x terms on the same side. x plus xz is equal to z minus 3. Factor out x, 1 plus z. And finally, divide both sides by 1 plus your z plus 1. Doesn't matter. And then you'll get x in terms of z. Now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this into my original expression. And let's go ahead and remember what that expression was. Let me go ahead and write that down here. It was f of x minus 3 over x plus 1 plus f of x plus 3 over 1 minus x equals x. So this was my original expression. 
and now I'm going to replace x with this everywhere, but we already know that this is going to give us a z, so needless, we don't need to do that. Let's go ahead and do this and do that one. So that's going to give us f of x minus 3. So x is going to be replaced with z minus 3 over z plus 1 minus 3 divided by z minus 3 over z plus 1 plus 1. This replaces x plus this is the second one is going to be z only, right? f of z. And the right hand side, we're just going to replace x with what it is. And it comes from here. Here we go. So I got another expression. Let's go ahead and simplify what's on the left hand side. If you make a common denominator or just multiply by z plus 1, you should be getting z minus 3 minus 3z three minus 3 and then divided by z minus 3 plus if you multiply by z plus 1 you're going to be getting z plus 1 plus f of z equals this expression right here so I was able to get another equation and then later on we're going to put those two together but let me go ahead and simplify this a little bit more this gives me negative 2z minus 6 divided by 2z minus 2 and of course we can divide just like the other one we can divide the top and the bottom by negative 2 and this gives me z plus 3 over and of course we're dividing by negative 1 so to get rid of negative here and the bottom is going to be 1 minus z okay so this is what we get from there and this is going to be my second equation so I got two equations so far uh, but notice that one of them is in y, the other one is in z. That doesn't matter. As you know, in functions, we can replace any variable with another variable or with a variable expression, as long as you're following the domain. So, for example, in this case, I could say that z could be replaced with x, but notice that those are not necessarily the same axes every time. So, for example, in this case, I'd like to replace uh, z with x, and that's going to give me, that's going to give me f of, x plus 3 over 1 minus x plus f of x equals x minus 3 over z. Oops, I was going to write z, but that's supposed to be an x. x plus 1. So in this equation, I basically replace z with x. And then I'm going to be doing the same thing for my first equation. It was in y, remember? I had f of y something. Now I'm going to replace this y with x as well. And that's going to give me another expression uh, that is true for f of x. So let's go ahead and do that now. And that should be f of, if you go back to the y equation, replace y with x. So here we replace z with x. Here we're going to replace y with x. And this gives me f of x plus f of x minus 3 over x plus 1 equals 3 plus x over 1 minus x. So that was my first equation. This is my second equation. Now I got a system of equations and they're both in x so that I can solve it. And my goal is to find f of x. So I think it would make sense. Well, you could try to eliminate f of x, but that wouldn't really help you. But if you just added these two equations, something interesting will happen. And if you go back to the original problem, here's what you notice. I have this expression in the original plus this expression in the original. Isn't that great? So we can just go ahead and add these two equations. And that's going to give us f of x plus 3 over 1 minus x plus, let's go ahead and bring this one next to it, f of x minus 3 over x plus 1. And then we have f of x twice, so let's write it as 2 f of x. And on the right hand side, of course, I'm going to be getting the sum of two expressions, right? Like this. Here we go. Okay, great. Now what do I get from here? Well, this sum is equal to x, as you should know, because at the beginning that was my original problem. So this sum is equal to x. So from here I can basically isolate f of x. Let's go ahead and do it for 2 f of x first. So this gives me, now at this point you can just go ahead and make a common denominator, but let's go ahead and put it all together, and then we'll make a common denominator. So I'm going to be subtracting this sum, which is x from both sides, and that leaves me with 2 times f of x. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator here, and then we're going to go from there. To make a common denominator, so I'd like to multiply the, this is a minus, uh, 1 minus x, I could probably turn it into an x minus 1, 
and kind of make it a minus sign, but that's okay. No worries. I'm going to multiply this by 1 minus x. I'm going to multiply this by x plus 1. And I'm going to multiply my x uh, by 1 minus x times x plus 1. That's going to be my expression. Later on, I can take care of the difference of two squares. So this should give me x minus 3 times 1 minus x plus 3 plus x times x plus 1 minus x times 1 minus x times x plus 1 and all over the common denominator x plus 1 times 1 minus x. I could also write the 1 minus x, uh, x plus 1 as 1 plus x. That would be also the difference of two squares. So let's go ahead and uh, simplify this. So from here, I should be getting something like this. Okay, I'm going to distribute. It's going to give me x minus x squared minus 3 plus 3x. And then I should be getting 3x plus 3 plus x squared plus x. This is all positive. And then here, these two give me, uh, these two will give me 1 plus x times 1 minus x, which is 1 minus x squared. If you distribute the x over, that's going to be negative x plus x cubed. So I'm going to have an x cubed. And the bottom one can be written as 1 minus x squared because this can be written as 1 plus x. All right. So that is the difference of two squares. Let's go ahead and simplify the numerator. And then we'll divide both sides by 2 to find f of x. So I get x cubed from here. That's the highest term. Now x squared minus x squared, that cancels out. Now let's see how many x's we have. These two x's cancel out. And we end up with, let's see how many x's. I have 3x plus 3x, which is 6x. Another x here is going to give me 7x. And obviously, the negative 3 and the positive 3 also cancel out, and that's my numerator. The denominator is 1 minus x squared. And now, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, or multiply the denominator by 2, same thing. And f of x is going to equal x cubed plus 7x divided by 2 minus 2x squared. And as you, as you can see here, f of x does not allow the values x equals 1 or x does um, x equals negative 1. So those values are not allowed. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.